In this series of videos, I'm going to introduce you to programming with Visual Basic.net inside Visual Studio. So let's begin by launching Visual Studio and taking a look at some of the features. Exactly what you see here will depend on which version of Visual Studio you're using. You can see that I'm using Visual Studio 2019. But essentially the features will be the same. You can see I have a list of my most recently used projects on the left hand side. On the right I'm going to choose the option to create a new project. And again what you see next will depend on which version of Visual Studio you're using. It will also depend on which programming languages you installed. You can see that I've installed a number of different programming languages, which tells you Visual Studio itself is not a programming language, it's an environment in which you can use a programming language. I'm going to use Visual Basic. On the right hand side I can see a number of different project templates which I can choose from. And I'm going to create a Windows Forms app. So, with the correct option chosen, click Next. You're now invited to give the project a name. It's offering me the name Windows App 2. This is because it's the second application which I've created. It's not a very meaningful name, so I strongly recommend that you change that. Perhaps, perhaps not. I think that's been done before. That'll do for now. You also need to be mindful of where the project will be saved, the location of your project. You can see the location of mine will be D, Visual Studio 2019 projects, but you can change this. In fact, I'll show you later that once you're in Visual Studio, you can change the default location. This is particularly important if you're working in a school or a college or an organisation. It may be that you only have permission to save Visual Studio projects in particular locations. Notice there's a browse button here if you do want to change the location. My solution has the same name as the project. I'll say a little bit about the difference between a solution and a project in a moment. And I'm going to say that I want to place the solution and the project in the same directory by ticking this box. Since this is a brand new project, I'm not going to worry too much about which version of the .NET framework I'm using. More about that later as well. So let's hit Create. And here is Visual Studio. I can see a little message on the bottom right there telling me that there's a new version of Visual Studio which can be downloaded. I'll maybe do that a little bit later. I'll just ignore it for now. Now there are lots of options here which I'll be talking about as we go along but suffice to say for now we have a menu of options across the top and each of these has a number of sub-options which in turn might have a number of sub-options. There's a toolbar. I can add extra toolbars which you'll see later but the most useful one is here to start with. On the right hand side I can see my Solution Explorer a solution is a collection of files that make up my application. And we'll take a closer look at these files later. I have a properties window, which will become important when I start building my user interface. And on the left hand side, there's a toolbox. If I just click on this, it will move into view. If I click away from it, it disappears. I actually like the toolbox in place all the time. So I'm gonna click on this little drawing pin to keep it there. And I can resize it if I need to. In the middle I've got my form. This is where I'm going to start building my user interface. So let's write some code. I'm going to start by dropping a button onto the form. So from my toolbox I click on button, draw the button onto the form, because the button is selected, I can see properties of the button in the properties window on the right hand side. I can see, for example, we have the text property of the button, which is currently button 1. I'm going to change that to press here. And notice how it's changed the appearance of the button on the form. 
The other thing I want to change is the name of the button. Every object that you place on a form will have a name property. Now it's currently button 1 because it's the first button which I placed on the form and I could leave it as button 1 but I want to start using a naming convention. BTN in lowercase because it's a button and then something meaningful which tells me what the button does. For example, start. You could call the button pretty much anything you like, as long as the name doesn't start with a number and as long as there are no spaces or special characters like question marks or exclamation marks in there. This naming convention makes it clear what the button does and it also makes it clear that it's a button and that will become important later on when I start writing code. There are other properties which I can change as well, for example the background colour. And I have a colour palette here which I can use. We'll stick with this for now, but you'll learn about other properties as and when you need them. What I want to do now is write some code that will run when the user of my application clicks on the button. To write some code for the button, I can double click it. The way to think of this is that the code is behind the form. My form is still there, you can see there's a tab here. That's the design view of my form and this is the visual basic view of my form. Notice that the toolbox no longer has anything on it because it's inappropriate to use it while I'm coding. I have line numbers down the left hand side. To be honest I don't like these and I'll turn them off in a moment. And I can see some code already there and I have to be very careful not to break it. For example, I can see public class form1 at the top and end class at the bottom. I'm not going to change this. These need to be in place in order for the form to work. Later, when you find out more about object-oriented programming, these two lines will make more sense. I can also see the stub of a procedure which will run when the button is clicked. Private sub button start click. Notice that's the name that I gave to my button. And notice that it's going to handle the click of the button. To be more precise, it will handle the click event of the button object. There's also some stuff going on in brackets here. These are called parameters and you'll find out more about parameters later. Suffice to say, leave this exactly as it is for now. We're going to write code between sub and end sub. So I'm just going to press the enter key a few times and give myself some more room. I can also give myself some more room above the procedure and below the procedure. Sub, by the way, stands for sub procedure. So let's write our first program. I'm going to use the message box command. Notice I'm typing in lowercase and as I type a list of options has appeared. Visual Studio is looking at the letters I'm typing and offering me a command to choose from so I can see MSG box here. I can ignore it and carry on typing or I can actually select it from the list. I'll show you how we can do this more quickly in a moment. I'll just press the space bar and I'm going to open a bracket and again there's some more information appearing on the screen. It's quite daunting the first time you see this but as you get used to it you'll find it's incredibly useful. Again I'm just going to ignore it. Notice how Visual Studio has automatically put the closing bracket on there for me. I'm going to open a double quote and again Visual Studio has automatically put the closing double quote on there. And finally I'll type the text of my message. Hello world. All kinds of things have happened here. For example, notice that MSG box has automatically recapitalized. That tells me that I typed it correctly. I'm getting visual feedback. Notice also the color coding the literal string which I'm using in my text message is coloured differently from the command itself. 
Again, I'm getting visual feedback on how to use this. This is why it's called Visual Studio. Let's put another message in. Now I've just typed the first few letters this time and I'm going to press the Tab key on my keyboard to select the rest of it. I've saved myself some typing. When you get used to it, you can write code very, very quickly. Hello world, how are you? And one more. Spelling mistake there. I'm just going to hold down my control key and tap the left arrow key, which will jump me one word at a time through that text. And then I can correct my spelling. To be honest, it doesn't matter what I put inside these double quotes. It won't be a problem. If, on the other hand, I mistype the command, I see a red wiggly line underneath it telling me that I've made an error. This is what we call a syntax error. I'm breaking the rules of the programming language. If I move my mouse over it, I can see some kind of error message there. MSGG box is not declared. Visual Studio thinks I'm trying to use something called a variable, and I haven't announced that I want to use it. More about variables later on. Let's just get rid of this line altogether. OK, so there's my program. I'll just close up a little bit of the white space. I don't need it. And I'm going to run the code. There's a Start button at the top. And my form is now on the screen. And to test it, I'll simply click on the button. There's my first message. There's my second message. And there's my third message. And the program has stopped running. My procedure may have stopped running, but the application itself is still running. The form is still on the screen. And I can stop this running by pressing the red square up here, or I can simply close the form with the red cross here. And everything has stopped. So there we have it, our first program, which is just a sequence of messages. But it's a program. There's one more thing I want to do now, and that is to save my work. Remember, a Visual Studio application can consist of several files, so rather than just clicking this little button here, which will save the form, I'm going to click this button, which will save all of the files in my application. I can now close down Visual Studio and return to my application tomorrow.